The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is often called author Mark Twain's masterpiece, but its depictions of race have long been controversial. Martha Teichner sat down with critically acclaimed author Percival Everett, who's put a provocative new spin on this American classic. By the way, we do mean provocative. If you're offended by strong language, you've been warned. This is um, my favorite author photo, and that, uh, standing on my shoulder, is Jim, Jim Crow. Who, besides Percival Everett, would have a pet crow named Jim Crow? He was on my shoulder when I wrote the novel Erasure. If I wasn't paying enough attention to him, he would march down my arm and peck at the keys, so I do credit him for having written some of the novel. Consider the irony, one of Everett's favorite literary devices, that Jim Crow helped him write a book about race, a novel within a novel satirizing publishing industry complicity in perpetuating stereotypes of black America. Erasure, published in 2001, has been turned into the Oscar-winning film American Fiction, starring Jeffrey Wright. There'd be dads, rappers, crack, that's black, right? Nobody's going to publish this. Just want to rub their nose, isn't it? We love it. What? what? Another irony, the film he had nothing to do with but likes has given Percival Everett more visibility than the 30-plus books he's written or the fact that he's been shortlisted for the Booker Prize and a finalist for a Pulitzer. Uh, not typically. Everett's books are often perversely funny. Imagine a funny novel about lynching, written in the form of a police procedural. Funny, until it isn't. Well, humor is interesting because if I can disarm a reader with humor, then I can address serious stuff. Everett's latest novel, James, Just Out, is a retelling of Huckleberry Finn from Huck's enslaved friend Jim's point of view. In it, language is a running joke, but also dangerous. When you read it on the page, the enslaved people, Jim in particular, speak in what we would commonly call standard English and they slip into dialect when they're around white people. Yes. Papa, why do we have to learn this? White folks expect us to sound a certain way and can only help if we don't disappoint them, I said. The only ones who suffer when they are made to feel inferior is us. In James, a man is lynched for stealing a pencil so Jim can write his story. In language, and in ownership of language, there resides a great power and resides an avenue to any kind of freedom that we're going to have. You use the N-word in your books and a lot of other words that are considered not politically correct. Because I'm telling the truth. You know, if somebody came in here right now and said, hey, you N-word, am I going to be less offended if they use the, the word no, that focus on the word misses the point. I don't care about the word, I care about the intention. I care about the meaning. I'm not impressed with attempts to cover up anything. Percival Everett, the son of a dentist, grew up in Columbia, South Carolina. He's from a long line of physicians. The only thing I knew growing up was I didn't want to be a doctor. Why is that? They had to be around people all the time. Harry is back here, and this is Banjo. He discovered he does like being around animals. Do you find it easier to relate to animals than you do people? Uh, I've never had an animal lie to me. Ah. On the way to becoming a prolific writer, Maybe where we and a distinguished professor of writing at the University of Southern California, Everett trained horses and even mules. He is intensely private, protective of his home and family, and only shows up for book events when he has to. I like small streams, and so I fish with very small flies. And He'd rather be fly fishing. Did somebody make that? I made that. And ties his own flies. The red and the white here. And the 
It frees me to think while I'm thinking. And he paints. The title of the show is Redaction. Redaction? Yes. That's a little bit like erasure. I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> the solo show, his fourth, opens in Los Angeles next month. His vocabulary here, as abstract as his writing, is explicit. Working with stories is internal and sedentary. I love the physicality of making the paintings. I don't consider them differently. I consider them as things I do to explain to myself my place in the world. And where does race figure into Percival Everett's worldview, given that his books confront it? Do I think about race? No, but it's there. Sadness? Sure. Why not? Let's have it be sadness. Reality? Yeah. Do I really care? No. I can't change this cultural tsunami that happened 400 years ago, and the waters of it are still waiting to recede. And writing your books doesn't take steps in that direction? Well, one hopes. I just do what I can and move on.